Thank you for your interest in our paper titled A System Dynamics Model Approach for Simulating Hyperinflammation in Different COVID-19 Patient Scenarios. This paper is joint work with David F. Nettleton and Enrique Hernandez Jimenez. My name is Vladimir S. Tivil Castro. I guess the motivation is something that has reached an unprecedented global scale. The global COVID-19 pandemic numbers are alarming, with close to 180 million people infected and close to 4 million deaths. COVID-19 is a new virus never before suffered by any human being. There is mounting evidence that this was a scientific tragedy of disastrous proportions. There is no comprehensive evidence that this virus naturally migrated from some other species to humans. COVID-19 is similar to SARS and MERS. Nevertheless, immunologists are observing new behavior of both the virus and the immunological response. However, we are a team that involves computer scientists and immunologists, and we base our research interests in how modeling and simulating the immune system has provided insights and new avenues so clinician and immunologists design experiments and explore certain aspect informing the understanding of how pathogens invade and how our body fights back. Naturally, a massive ongoing research effort to understand COVID-19 and the simulation of models have emerged at a macro level, where many studies have been conducted on the epidemiological aspect. For example, how those healthy and those infected evolve, how those infected infect others. There is also a massive effort in understanding the molecular and biochemical level. Simulation models represent the interactions of the virus S spine with the angiotensin converting enzyme 2, A, C, E2, receptor to penetrate the host cell. Our modeling is between these scales. We focused on how the viral load grows and how the immune system fights it back. We are aiming for a model that can assist treatment of infected patients, and thus we focus on one measurable substance named IL-6. IL-6 is produced by inflammatory alveolar macrophages, the innate immune system, and also influences the response of the adaptive immune system. We use an approach of system dynamics and develop the model so its first input would be the virulence of the virus. For instance, SARS and MERS are less virulent than COVID-19, which now is developing different virulence in new strains. The second input is the patient's conditions. Our aim is that the model should reflect the observed potential for the immune system to yield and potentially lead to sepsis. We also use the data produced by the model to extract decision rules with three aims. First, the predictors in the rules should be what immunologists understand and thus validate the model. Secondly, perhaps produce a knowledge discovery and reveal some new exciting observation. Thirdly, this model could also become predictive if combined with machine learning models and alert medical staff of potential future paths the infection may take on the patient, supporting decision making, especially those treating the modulation of IL-6. Our model may seem intimidating at first sight, however, it is by no means close to the complexity of what is known about the human immune system. It focuses mostly on the native immune system, and the complications of the adaptive immune system are mostly left behind mainly because these also seem relatively unknown for COVID-19. There is a large body of literature on mathematically modeling the response to infection, primarily based on predator-prey models. Not only because of the mathematical elegance of those models reflect the effects on population size of a struggle or battle for survival or resources, but because they seem manageable. These models usually adopt some variant of the lotka volterra equations, broadly used in tutorials and software tool demonstration to illustrate the derivations of solutions to a cyclic equilibrium. However, a common criticism is that population numbers are not a continuum, and thus, discrete simulations are more accurate or realistic, even including some randomization for some probabilistic modeling. Others argue that the participants may have intelligent behavior in negotiating several competing goals and prioritizing intentions. Thus, suggesting that multi-agent system simulations are even more realistic for such predator-prey class of scenarios. The system dynamics approach builds models fundamentally out of two components, stocks and flows. Stocks are entities that can accumulate or be depleted. In our case, viral load is an example. Flows, on the other hand, are entities that make stocks increase or decrease. Thus, net new viruses may result out of infected lung tissue. It is possible to reconstruct some mathematical models and illustrate them visually using these modeling tools. Stocks are rectangles, while flows are tick arrows. Small blue arrows reflect a dependency. In this example, 
The inflow is a function of the current stock and the grow rate. Since there is no outflow, the resulting behavior is exponential growth. Not surprisingly, predator-prey scenarios have been modeled using stock and flows. Our model will have elements of such struggle as virus attempt to infect more lung tissue, and the cells will use their defenses and invoke other aspects of our immune system to assist in fighting the infection. There are some aspects of a COVID-19 infection that seem difficult, particularly for some patients. There could be an overreaction by the immune system worsening the patient's status after 7 or 8 days. In simple terms, our immune system is usually very good at recognizing ourselves when they have been compromised or are sick. So, our immune system turns against our sick cells. But if this recognition or signaling is altered, then our immune system could also turn against our healthy cells, or alternatively, appear lethargic and ineffective. COVID can lead to such a state of apparent general confusion or so-called hyperinflammatory sepsis. An excessive amount of pro-inflammatory cytokines usually recognizes this. For example, the substance IL-6 we have mentioned before is essentially produced by one of our defenses, the macrophages. Production of IL-6 is a general signal of alarm, invoking reinforcements to fight the infection. However, too much IL-6 confuses, not only an indication that the battle is being lost. Our cells are designed to operate in an inflammatory state, let us say a state of emergency, only temporarily. So, excessive cytokines damage our tissues as well. While treating an infection, clinicians can monitor the evolution of the immune response by quantifying substances such as IL-6, PCT, DD, troponin, LDH, and lymphopenia, that is, these are usually measurable. We believe models like ours are attractive because they pave the way to build tools that could predict later stages of a patient's evolution from early stages, therefore facilitating treatment. Thus, the treatment of a covered infected patient is the delicate modulation of the immune system response. Some trials and studies were being conducted at the time of the writing of the paper. In particular, some of these treatments suggest the inhibition of IL-6. IL-6 is naturally produced during the fighting of the COVID-19 infection, so when and how much to supply is crucial. Our model aims at synthesizing the necessary understanding so that such determination could become possible. Alveolar macrophages are mononuclear phagocytes found in the alveoli of the lungs. They ingest small inhaled particles resulting in the degradation, clearance and presentation of the antigen to adaptive immune cells. Thus, alveolar macrophages are critical innate immune sentinel cells residing in the lung. The alveolar macrophage stands as the guardian of the alveolar blood interface, serving as the front line of cellular defense against respiratory pathogens. Macrophage polarization shows two types of alveolar macrophages. M1 macrophages are classically activated, typically by IF and alpha or lipopolysaccharide LPS, producing pro-inflammatory cytokines, phagocytized microbes, and initiating an immune response. M1 macrophages protect against bacteria and viruses. M2 macrophages are alternatively activated by exposure to certain cytokines such as IL-4. IL-10, or IL-13. These macrophages are associated with wound healing and tissue repair. As we mentioned, the inflammatory response by M1 macrophages must be tightly regulated, as uncontrolled inflammation leads to clinical complications. Thus, the first crucial modeling aspect is triggering a migration from a resting state to an inflammatory M1 macrophage by viral presence. Later, we incorporate the growth of the M2 alveolar macrophages. Already creating this model, there are several abstractions from reality. Some researchers argue that there are even subtypes of M2 macrophages and that the classification as M1 versus M2 is not strict. However, a systems model has the advantage of formalizing the interactions, demanding a system thinking approach, establishing mathematical relations, defining units, and potentially opening investigation lines. Such avenues for research include what are some of the factors or constants involved, should these rates even be treated as constants, is there any science that suggests a better model? There are even earlier lines of defense. The virus infected cells produce interferon, causing neighbor cells to intensify microbiological antiviral defenses. Thus, we can model as a predator-prey model the struggle between the lung cells and the arriving COVID-19 virus. 
Two types of molecules are part of signaling the alarm. One is simply the traces of the invaders. Pathogen-associated molecular patterns, PAMPs, foreign molecules coming from microbial pathogens. The other is the result of destroyed local tissue, damage-associated molecular patterns, DAMPs, molecules coming from damaged or dead cells in the host. Although macrophages move from inactive to M1, the new viruses such as SARS, MERS and COVID-19 exhibit viral evasion capability. They can stay unnoticed inside an infected cell, without such alarms reaching as broadly. This evasion capacity is a degree of virulence. Our model incorporates the viral evasion capability by representing an impact on the activation flow from resting macrophages to M1. Also, our model enables us to represent the virulence of the virus by regulating the sensitivity. First, with early detection, high sensitivity, low virulence, M1 macrophages grow quickly in numbers and extinguish the virus rapidly. Second, the virus can pass under the radar for a while, resulting in a slow response of low numbers of macrophages. Now we can elaborate the M1 to M2 dynamics further. M1 macrophages appear in the early stages of inflammation and are activated by four key mediators, interferon gamma, IFN Greek letter gamma, tumor necrosis factor, TNF, and damage-associated molecular patterns, DAMPs. From these mediator molecules, Alveolar macrophages create a pro-inflammatory response that in return produces pro-inflammatory cytokines like interleukin-6, IL-6. Interferon, IFN, gamma, activates resting macrophages as M1 macrophages. When fighting severe viral infections, more macrophages are recruited by the secretion of further inflammatory mediators. Now our model also incorporates macrophages production of IL-6, that is, in COVID-19 infected individuals, cytokines like IL-6 increase during disease and decreases during recovery. The adaptive immune system is like the cavalry that comes in support. However, with aging or smoking, the adaptive immune system capabilities are reduced. T-cell and B-cell function presents age-dependent defects that can result in an overproduction of cytokines, which in turn results in deficient control of viral infection and prolonged pro-inflammatory responses. Smoking has been identified as a factor that promotes macrophage activation and the macrophage polarization for M1 macrophages over M2 macrophages. Our model, with two input parameters allows for six what-if scenarios, or experiments. Viral load is significantly less if the virulence is less. The patient precondition has a significant effect in controlling IL-6 and the adaptive immune system reacts earlier for lower virulence. When visualizing pairs of outputs, we observe that virulence is a determinant factor when controlling and eliminating viral load. Also, the patient precondition is critical to the prompt and effective response of the adaptive immune system. The simulation has immunological interpretations. High virulence ID equals 2, and healthy patient precondition, ID equals 0, represented by the green line has impaired antigen presentation and inhibits the development of an adaptive response, RAS. Intermediate controlled level of M1 macrophages reduce their inflammatory cytokines like IL-6. Such condition would contribute to protection against septic shock. The model highlights the importance of the interaction between the antigen-presenting cells like M1 macrophages and the T-cells during infections. Finally, the higher inflammatory situation, blue lines in figures 3 to 5, increases M1 and T-cell with more lag, and a lesser increasing slope, therefore, they are much less efficient in eliminating the viral load. We also used the model and its generated data for the six scenarios to construct a rule-based classifier. This is an application of machine learning, where we use the tool Waker to learn using its PRT algorithm and obtain rules that estimate IL-6. The generation of this rules identifies the attributes that are high predictors. We conclude that the attributes related to macrophages activation, such as M1 and the active adaptive immune system are key stocks for predicting IL-6. There are some aspects of the model we could not elaborate further because these aspects remain unknown to immunologists. The immune control of the excessive inflammatory response is called refractory state, RS. The state has been observed for several pathologies such as bacterial sepsis, 
acute pulmonary syndrome, cystic fibrosis, and even cancer. RS has been thought of as a protective mechanism against septic shock and ischemia. Its immune regulation was associated with non-controlled hyperinflammatory status in COVID-19. The COVID-19-induced cytokine storm is associated with disease severity and outcome. This has prompted several treatment trials for interleukin-6 receptor IL-6R, monoclonal antibody tocilizumab, directed COVID-19 therapy. With more understanding of RS, the model could be refined further. We believe this model is a first step. The model suggests aspects that need further study so that it can then assist in choosing the correct immunomodulatory treatment. For instance, the regime of application of an interleukin-6 IL-6 inhibitor, tocilizumab, that corresponds to the projected immune status of the patients. It could lead to finding the points where a cause-effect relationship can be altered in search for vaccines or cures. Thank you very much for your attention. The paper includes the link to the downloadable materials. Any questions, please contact us.